Hi everyone, I'm Chong on Director's Cut, TVS We Inspire Your World. And together with me today, we have Bernard Chowley, one of the best directors in Malaysia, well known for so many films that he has been working on, together with many actors and actresses who has been making their names from his film. So let's invite our directors, Bernard Chowley, on screen. Hi, Bernard. Hi, Chong. Hi, thank <laughs> Hi. you for having me. And hello, Sarawak. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hello. Yes, as you know, I'm I'm a Malaysian film director, but at the moment I'm in the UK. And, yeah. And this is a first first for me. So thank you for having me on the show. Yes, that is really an honor for us to have you. I believe that uh, your observation, which somehow tackled the zeitgeist of Southeast Asia, even the world, where women empowerment became a very very important issue to tackle on and to even share with the world. So your first film, Go and Ginshu, for instance, was a hit in Southeast Asia. It was later on being remade in uh, Philippines and it was also kind of like uh, being well received in Singapore and Malaysia itself. So could you please uh, share with us about how the ideas of human empowerment in that film came about? Yes, yeah, so uh, a bit about the observation. I'm glad you mentioned observation. So at university, mm. I didn't just study communication and film. I actually also studied anthropology and sociology. And as a, as a sociologist, as an anthropologist, uh, the themes and, 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 and the issues you observe are what you want to uh, put into your story. Mm. And uh, at the beginning of my career, after I finished uh, a master's in London, I returned to Malaysia and I was very clear that I wanted to make films and stories for a Malaysian audience. And as it happened, I... I, I managed to work with uh, very strong female producers, Tiara Jacqueline mm. initially, mm. and then Lina Tan from Red Films. Mm. And uh, Golang Gintu actually came about from, uh, it was a direct offshoot from 3R, Tiga R, a mm. TV program about yes. uh, women and issues, uh, Respect, mm. Relax, Respond. And mm. although um, I was a male director, I was mm. actually at one point the only male director who was trusted to deal with these issues. Yes. And I think again, uh, again, although I'm not um, uh, female or uh, or a woman, I again because of my upbringing, uh, mm. observing uh, Malaysian society, especially at the time mm. in the early uh, noughties, um, mm. I felt I was very ready. I was very ready mm. to do a film like that. Wow. And 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 I think we set out with the Golan Ginchu to do mm. a film about women and sport for young mm. people and mm. and because it was about a team, literally a team of futsal players, eight mm. of them to be specific, mm -mm. we 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 felt that um Rafida Rafida Abdullah, the writer, could yes. could create eight very different characters with yes. eight very different sets of issues. So although yeah. it was uh, Fazura as the as the protagonist. It was her mm. journey, but mm. especially when it became a TV series, it, we had the privilege of it being a TV series uh, on Channel Eight, uh, TV Eight um, Media Prima for two mm. seasons. We were mm. able to flash out eight journeys, stories of eight young women mm. and their issues from sort of body image to finding love and uh, sexuality and wanting mm. to, to be successful in the career, education, yes. sort of even social issues, uh, everything. Mm. We just loaded Up everything in into it. Yeah. Sure. And, and I, I suppose that was the sociological observational part of mm. it. But at the same mm. time, it, was also, it, it also had to be fun. It had to be young. It had to be yes. edgy. Yes. In, in terms of the zeitgeist, it had to catch the, the essence of fashion, music, sure. um, uh, visual styles at that time. So, yes. yes. I observed that the, the, the usage of comedy play a very important role in this because I think you and your uh, script writer uh, observe kind of the importance by tackling important issues, serious issues, but using comedy uh, elements. Maybe you can share about that in a very short one? Yes, I, I prefer to not use comedy, but it's humor mm. and heart. Humor, yeah, yeah. heart and substance. Because yes. in that sense, of course, comedy, comedy, especially when, uh, when we talk about it in in Malaysia or Asian society can be very shallow, whereas actually comedy is loaded with a lot of um, mm. complex layers as well. Um, yes. uh, and to able to be able to make an audience laugh out loud mm. because it's mm. funny, but mm. actually also to make the audience laugh nervously. Mm. When, mm -hmm. when an audience now laughs nervously, 
you mm. also know actually it's touching something very close to the bone. It's actually oh, a tricky gosh. issue that you're. It's actually a tricky issue that you're dealing with. Um, mm. uh, and and uh, in in the film, we in film as well as the series, we dealt with um, serious issues, even like incest, rape. You know, father mm. Uh, mm. Uh, raping the daughter and making her pregnant. You know, so okay. so that's an an example of we used mm. humor, issue, substance, but. At the bottom of it is the heart. There has to be heart and truth to the to the character in the stories, and mm. um, yes. Yeah, so 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 so, the comedy came from just having a lot of fun with all the actors on set. Yes, I, I did. Yes. I didn't ask them to be funny. Mm -hmm. I in, in the process of uh, interpreting the script that Rafida wrote, mm. the humor, the comedy, the energy, mm. the life, the yes. uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the yes, they they basically brought life to the script and uh, yes. and also and humor and comedy is also very much dynamic you you can yes. be funny on your own but mm. it's not a stand-up comedy you're so you're not meant to be funny on your own so you play off each other so it's very much an ensemble piece yes i uh, on top of that you had been mentioning about how this energy worked out with your uh actors which I think is a very timely thing for us to talk with you, uh, Bernard, on this show. So uh, just after the commercial, we are going to talk with Bernard about how he dealt with uh, the, the shaping of the film together with uh, the actor and actress that he had been working with, since we are, he is well known for devising and improvising the scenarios with the actors. So stay tuned on TVS, We Inspire Your World. Welcome back on TVS, We Inspire Your World. I'm Chong. Together with me today, we have Bernard Chow Lee, one of the best Malaysian directors who have been well known for devising and improvising scenarios with actors. Just to name a few, such as Lisa Suryani, Brom Pahari, No Fazura, and Reza Minhat. So today, we are going to talk to him in this second section about how he had been working with the actors in order to achieve the objective of the particular scenes. So maybe how, like, I'm actually very interested to know how long did you spend with the actors uh, in order for you to come to a point, okay, I'm ready and the actors is ready for uh, going into the production. So I'm, I'm known as a Malaysian director who insists on rehearsals. And during mm -hmm. rehearsals, you don't just look at the script. In fact, we don't really deal with the script or the specific scenes until quite late. Uh, we find your character, your dynamic with each other, and create a backstory. And throughout the rehearsal process, which goes from two weeks to a, to a month, you know, every other day or, or in different pockets, I realized actually that all these actors, Fazura, Lisa, Bront, are so amazing at improvising scenarios. And actually from there, uh, it led me in the second phase of my career uh, to work with projects that were not so script driven mm -hmm. uh, but more uh story driven you've got the skeleton of the story but you yes. work out the story with the actors and yes. uh, so for instance you know fazura i've worked with many times but lisa srihani for instance i've worked with since she was 14 years old and mm -hmm. uh in in a film like istanbul akudatang for instance uh which is mm -hmm. Uh, which was the number one uh, romantic comedy in 2012. Um, mm. There was one scene in it in particular, uh, although mm. it wasn't improvised, we mm. shot it based on the script. And it is, a, mm. it is, a, it is a, a scene where she's just come away from of a big argument. There's mm. ice cream in her hair and mm. the character played by Beto Kushari, who's meant to be her housemate um, mm. in Istanbul. Mm. washes her hair and sort of like yeah. takes the the yeah. ice cream off of it a very poignant which, moment it's it's a very poignant moment because again sort of like again it, actually again talk about uh, our humor when we played mm. it there was a lot of nervous laughter in mm. the audience because mm. actually it's it's a very sensitive provocative yes. scene because mm -hmm. it's it's a man sort of like uh, touching the aura of yes. the woman so yes. like and they're not married and also mm. it's something that we had never seen on screen before a malay woman mm. being, being uh, whose hair whose mm. hair being washed by by a by a man not her husband so mm. we shot the scene and it wasn't so great um mm -hmm. and i sort of like i i thought about it and i actually wanted to go back again and mm. um and reshoot it, but with a with, with a with a much smaller team, just the cameraman, the mm. actors, and I. 
and, mm. and, and in that sense, I directed them and I talked them through the scenario, mm. which mm. ended up uh, to be the edit that we uh, used. Yeah. And what I mean by that is sort of like um, improvising is actually throwing something to the actor. And, mm. um, you know, leading many years later to a few years ago, um, I wanted to work with Lisa specifically in a film called yes. Container Anna. Yes. Which is the story of uh, uh, a woman yeah. who's packed her entire home to, to, to join her husband abroad, mm-hmm. but then oh, yeah. he sends her a text message saying, talak, 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 don't come. So the yes. whole film is about her um, mm. uh, coming to terms with it. And mm. the, 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 the whole script was only about 36 pages for a 90-minute, mm. 100-minute 100, wow. uh, 100 film. And mm. talking about the rehearsals, uh, Lisa had just given birth to her second child, but I saw her said, I will rehearse with you during confinement. You have to trust me. <laughs> I'll come to your home and I'll rehearse with you. And, um, together with and the baby. To, to, together with the baby, we, we, we factored in sort of like susu time when we go off and feed, uh, oh, uh, wow. uh, breastfeed your, your, your mm-hmm. child. Lovely. But, you know, because it was a one, one, one location, one woman film. Yes. In the um, house. Yes. An example of a scene, for instance, is um, it's set in 2001 and she mm. has a phone, a Nokia mm. phone that doesn't have yeah. a battery in it. And mm. she's trying to fictitiously imagine calling her husband and really being mm. honest with him, you mm. know, uh, uh, and you know, if you follow the story, actually she's mm. she's pushed a broken down car into the living room yes, where she's yes. sleeping and living. Yes. Mm. And as it happens, a, a, a cobra has come into yes. the room as well. Mm. So it's a scene where she's stuck in the in the car. She can't mm. go out. There's a dangerous mm. thing outside. Her mm. phone is dead, mm. but she imagines this conversation of yes. really telling how mm. she feels to. Her about to be ex-husband. Yes. And the reason I love improvising is because pe- actors in that moment come up with lines of dialogue that are so mm. honest, so true, mm. that I could never script it. Even some of the best yes. writers could not script it because it comes mm. really from mm. the heart. That's what mm. I mean. Um, mm. and, 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 and when we shot that, she sort of said, you know, uh, you're a bad person. Shame mm. on me for loving you. You know, so mm. although, they, although they are simple, they are such simple mm. uh, lines, you're it's a bad child. person. It's almost, mm. it's, it's almost childlike. It's almost naive. You're a bad person. Mm. You know, but, mm. but, but the way she said it, you're a bad person. Shame mm. on me for loving you. Mm. You know, so like when, 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 when we shot that scene, mm. uh, I knew we had it. And, yeah. and, 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 and to arrive at that moment, it mm. goes from sort of like the, you know, the trust that you have with the actor, rehearsing mm. with her, but mm. not, not over planning. What are you going to say? Because yes. in that moment, yes. the magic of improvisation is, uh, is such where it will happen in that moment. And uh, another, a, a, another actor that I've loved working with is Bron Palare. And I took yeah. him to Greece mm. to make a film uh, mm. where it was three actors and the whole film was right. improvised. Yes, yes. Yeah, maybe you can just uh, quickly mention about the particular scene that you love very much that you improvise together with Bront in that film. Bront is a character who goes to Greece to volunteer yes. at a refugee camp. Yes. And it's another level of improvisation. When we went for the recce, there were hmm. hundreds of refugees crossing from yes. Turkey to Greece uh, yes. every day. Uh, hmm. But when we actually filmed the refugee camps were empty because the EU had mm. brought in a, re- a, a, a legislation. So as a director, mm. you actually improvise in a different way. The script mm. that you had, you throw out <laughs> mm. because mm. We, we were meant to have Bront on a Sunday playing football, feeding With the refugees. A lot of refugees. Um, but, but I sort of like, I, I, I twisted the, the story and said, mm. okay, Bront, uh, another volunteer and the actor are going mm. to go out uh, on sea. It was almost yeah. like a slightly uh, a bizarre, surreal scenario. And that's another, that's another aspect of uh, improvising. Sometimes the yeah. scene that you've scripted on location yeah. may yeah. not happen and then you've yeah. got to find a way around it. And sometimes, yes. as always, magic happens and the, and, and, and the story actually becomes better because of it. Yeah, I am very touched to see how being 
uh, having the wisdom to change things when it is needed. So I think that is what we are talking about. And, and for the next session, we are going to talk with you about your worldview and particularly about your belief in coaching the young and also your thoughts about your life, which I believe all these thoughts has been translated in the way you directed your actor and actress, as well as your uh, script writing and your directing. So let's uh, stay tuned. We are with the We'll be talking. I will just do it again. Let's stay tuned. We'll be talking to Bernard again later. Welcome back on TVS Director's Cut with me, Chong. Today we have very, very honored to have this person on the show, Bernard Chow Lee. And in this last session, we are going to talk to him about uh, coaching the young and his belief and his worldview about life. I think that's a very big subject matter, but I, I strongly believe we have to catch him on this and talk about this. <laughs> yes, and for your information, he had been organizing or involved in a lot of uh, workshops uh, in, in training the young and facilitating the young in making their film. Uh, for example, he had been coming to Unimas to organize and uh, to facilitate a, a workshop on directing. And from there, he brought this very student of uh, Safwan Saleh into a telemovie project. And he also involved in Singapore International Film Festival as one of the core mentors. And he also attended many, many or he, uh, workshops other than this. So yeah, could you please share with us what was your belief on that? And why are you doing that until today? Yeah. I think it also relates back to my upbringing. As a teenager, I had the experience mm. of, of being um, very, have, having very good experiences uh, having mentors and teachers and, and, and people who really sort of like uh, shaped mm. and helped shape who I am. And it mm. wasn't teaching. They weren't teachers, but they were people who facilitated a process mm. where I discovered yeah. my, myself. Mm. And um, mm. although I said I had very strong fe uh, female characters around me, I, I, I had a godfather uh, mm. who, who, whose methodology was to find an, a way of educating uh, mm. in a way that is learning how to learn. So mm -hmm. sort of uh, indirectly, somehow, when I started my career, uh, mm -hmm. I, I felt that I didn't know everything and I still don't know everything. And mm -hmm. part, part, of the, part of the reason of working with, 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 with younger people and facilitating a process where I challenge you, you challenge me, we learn mm -hmm. from each other, I'm definitely mm -hmm. not teaching. Again, so like, as mm -hmm. a mentor, you don't teach. Because um, mm -hmm. I think sort of like... Um, Often, too often, the director is seen as a very uh, a big ego person, someone who, mm -hmm. who has a very big ego. Whereas I suppose, you know, quite early on, I've, I realized that, that I need to manage pride and humility. Because again, mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, that, that, uh, th of course, there's a sense of pride in what you do, uh, but yes. you also have to have a lot of humility to, mm -hmm. to, to, to learn wisdom from people, so especially younger people. And it also mm. coincided with um, the beginning of my career. Thankfully, in my 20s, I mm. came back from London with my master's. But mm. as I was figuring out my own journey as a director, I was mm. also uh, teaching part-time at uh, mm. SENFAT, Centre for Adv Advanced mm. Design, um, mm. founded by uh, uh, Srawa uh, Magnet mm. Effendi Nawawi's daughter. Uh, mm. Efida Effendi is no longer around. But uh, So it was actually really good. As I was starting out my career, I was... Mm -hmm. figuring out my own path but it's also teaching and it's mm -hmm. there that um i i i taught students like umi savannah farid rami mm -hmm. who became uh, directors in their own right casting directors mm -hmm. in their own right um mm -hmm. and uh and, and and that is an ongoing thing but i suppose also at the back of my mind I come mm -hmm. from uh, an educator family, educating family. Uh, Both my parents were teachers, although I yes. never met my father. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, my mother was a very strong figure. Uh, mm -hmm. All the memories I have of people talking about my father were sort of like how he influenced and affected the people mm -hmm. he taught. On another impression, I also saw you on set. You, you went around to thank everyone and make sure everyone had their food, had their drinks during the productions. So I was very touched because never ever in my life seeing an, mm. a director who went down on the ground and you know say thank you to everyone. And maybe you can share with us about you know this kind of right energy you have been having and how you actually cultivate that in you. 
Yeah. Yes, I, I have very simple rules, and one of them is sort of I don't think production should be a torture torture camp because a lot of people sort of say, oh, we're going into filming, we're going into battle. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. I don't think we're going into war. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's hard work. It, 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 it's long hours. Uh, a lot of time uh, people yeah. feel unloved and the pay mm. is not always great. So, mm. you know, very you know, from the very start, I've always felt that the director sets the energy and the tone uh, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Mm. And, um, and the very simple rules, I think, you know, the energy on set should not be happy, happy, but it should be sort of like at a good, pace um i believe that people should be fed well because you know it's not just energy but sort of like a, it's a very simple thing you know in malaysia we have really good food so there's no reason yes. why, why 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 the crew and actors don't get fed well but yes. again coming back to this this thing about uh, pride mm -hmm. and humility um mm -hmm. i know uh film is a co very collaborative uh, uh yes. effort if I wanted no. to be a solo artist, I would paint in a studio. But film mm -hmm. being a very collaborative art form, yes. you you want everybody to give their best, and True. and in, in and, and in that sense, there there needs to be a sense of respect mm -hmm. um, for every person's contribution and every uh, every person's uh, role in it. So um, as yes. I uh, as I mentioned before, um, I I always look at the call sheet. So I. Oh, yeah. want to know who the assistant uh, uh, lighting person is, who the runner is, so that I know every single person's name. Because yes. I think that there needs to be a sense of respect. You're not the director. I don't need to know everybody else. I only need yeah. to know the stars and, the, and everything. And, and I think, again, that's always a good way of managing my own ego and my True. own uh, mm. uh, uh, overinflated um, head, as it were. Because... because mm. The, to, to, to be humble and respect and thank. It's, it, 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 it's amazing how, how mm. a, the simple gesture of, of thanking everybody going mm. around and thanking mm. everybody by name, you know, mm. Um, mm. in every country, whether, and it's, a, it's the same whether I've shot in Istanbul, and I was a mm. shock when I shot in Istanbul and I went every, <laughs> when, 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 when to, 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 to thank everybody. Because I think they feel thankful that they've given mm. Um, uh, their energy for the day and they will come back the next day to work as hard if not better. Uh, it's very exciting and I would say inspiring talking to you. Maybe you can share with us how do you think and what do you think you are going to work on in the upcoming years? Uh, are there any upcoming projects and what do you really wish to achieve in your life and maybe what do you wish to see in the film industry as a general one? So, you know, yes, I, I'm still making films uh, in Malaysia. I've got uh, one project uh, that will probably hopefully be made next year in Malaysia. It's a, a Malaysian produced film, uh, uh, something for uh, a regional broadcaster or well, interna international broadcaster, HBO. But I think my track isn't just to be bigger and more successful with regards to film. Actually, mm -hmm. at the moment, um, the element of playing a role in society is always mm -hmm. there and ever present. And, mm -hmm. and I'm actually also uh, looking at the power of story in mm -hmm. social change. And uh, yeah. what, what, what I mean by that is uh, I'm starting conversations that are very exciting. You mm -hmm. know, writers have writer's room. Now mm -hmm. there's the idea of future writer's room, where mm -hmm. people who come from different backgrounds, not necessarily film, talk about issues in the world, uh, mm -hmm. from climate change to, you know, uh, uh, water Refugees. poverty in, in cities, yes. what uh, uh, the, the, the idea of a future resilient city. So I think, you know, the, 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 sociolog the, the, the sociologist in me will also Shine. be there. So it's film yeah. director, sociologist, chef. Yep. Oh my, marvellous. We would really, really wanted to watch your upcoming films. But as we said before, I think in our conversation, there are also many exciting things about the film that never been made. So maybe in the next show or any other upcoming show that we have this opportunity, I would love to talk to you about those. And hopefully we can do that. And I would like to thank you. And thanks a lot for you know, being on board and talk to us and share with us about these inspiring stories of yours. And with this, I would like to say a big thank you, Bernard. Do you have any final words to everyone? Thank you, uh, TV Sarawak, TVS. Uh, thank you, Chong. Thank you, producers. I love Sarawak, and I think Sarawak has the best pepper in the world. So I want to go back to Sarawak to, to not just buy yes. pepper, but to meet lovely people and to hopefully make a film and tell uh, stories in Sarawak uh, one day and work with you again, Chong. Okay, if I were the boss of TVS, 
the contract is already signed. <laughs> yep, I think I think that's all for today. And thank you very much. And thank you for all of you who have been patiently, actively, attentively watching to this show. Thank you very much and have a good day.